Hello everyone, I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head, broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And welcome to Real Science Challenge. In my last post, I spoke about how I'm using standards-based assessment, or SBA for short, with my classes. And thanks to Kirsten Laird Osterhout, I hope I'm saying that right, on Facebook who posted, thanks, any tips for a district that still uses letter grades and percentages? So today, I'm sharing how I'm using SBA with my Physics 11 and Physics 12 classes while still reporting a letter grade and percentage for each student. Now, long story short, I've had to change the weighting system I use for grades. I've had to develop a scale that converts proficiencies to percentages, and I've had to conference with students more regularly. Before I dive deeper, handouts for this activity or this post can be found at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP39. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So I made the switch to using SBA, that is assessing students on proficiency in science skills and practices with my senior physics students while still reporting percentages for term or year's end. Now one benefit of this is it's really helped stress to students that physics isn't just about the calculations. It's also about, among other things, explaining phenomena using physics concepts. For a bit of context, in BC, there are four levels of proficiency. First, emerging, then developing, then proficient, and finally, extending. To make the switch to SBA, while still reporting out percentages, I've had to do the following. Number one, I've had to change my traditional grade or mark distribution from tests and assignments to proficiency in standards. For example, in my grade 12 class before SBA, student mark distribution was based 20% on labs and assignments and 80% on tests and quizzes. Now, with SBA, student mark distribution is equally weighted across five standards, process analyze, communication, etc., etc. There is no more test category and no more assignment category, just standards. And by giving equal weight to all the standards, I'm saying that all aspects, like scientific thinking, planning, conducting experiments, all these aspects are equally important in physics and not just the calculations or handful of other things that appear on tests. Number two, I've had to use my professional judgment to develop a conversion scale that converts proficiencies to percentages. Now for me, at the end of term, I give an overall proficiency for each standard. So for example, Ralph here has five assignments under communication. Ralph is a fictional student in my physics class. On the first assignment, he was developing. Second assignment, also developing. Third, fourth, and fifth, proficient. Now I'd say that overall, Ralph is now proficient in communication, even though he may have struggled on the first couple assignments. Then I look at the other standards and I assign an overall pr proficiency for those as well. And then I look at this and I convert it to a percentage. Now to me, a student who is proficient across all standards is a solid B student. You know, they're, they're really solid. A student who's totally rocking it, extending in all areas. Well, to me, that is like a high A student. Someone who's going to get like 98%. And a student who's developing across all areas, well, that to me, he's like, he or she's like a C plus student to me or, or a 70% student. Now, what if a student is in between, some extending, some proficient? Well, then they're somewhere between 84% and 97%. I'd have to know the student and what they've kind of achieved in order to be definitive. Finally, number three, I've had to conference with my students more regularly when using SBA. Now, conferencing allows me to clarify to students how they can improve to get to the next proficiency level. For example, in my physics class, I go over each quiz, test, or assignment with the class and I talk about what proficient or extending would look like. Conferencing also allows students to reflect upon their own learning. Now, I've had students write reflections for me at the end of term or end of the year, telling me what they're strong at, where they need to improve, where they have improved, and what they need to continue to work on. I've also had students write down what percentage they feel they sh they've achieved during the term, 
based on proficiency scales and my conversion tables. And if I've done a good enough job communicating the proficiencies throughout the term, then students should be able to come up with a percentage on their own that is in fact pretty close to what I would assign them anyways. That's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button down below or leave me a comment. Handouts once again are at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP39. Thanks for watching and let's talk science again soon.